2002 Dodge Dakota. Um, remove the air box, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the the IAC valve, the idle the idle air control valve that um, seems to be giving me a problem. And that pretty much requires two T25 screws. There's one, and the other one's on the other side here. And there's only one connector that unplugs, and that's pretty much here. Just go ahead and remove the tab, unplug it, take it out, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and clean it. Alright, so clean the AIC valve. You're first gonna want to um, make sure that you put you put this little um, kind of nipple part back to the exact same location that it's currently on right now. So you'll understand once I take it all apart why am I doing this. So um, I've seen one of the YouTubers um, cleaning a different one pretty much get like a ruler but what I ended up doing is I just grabbed this styrofoam plate and then you can see I made some marks here so I'm marking the one of the edges to the tip of this uh, valve to make sure that I pretty much put it back to the same uh, location and so you can see the little marks I made there and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this part here and you can just turn it counterclockwise and you should be able to unscrew it. So you want to go ahead and start unscrewing this. And now this one was a little bit hard. I actually had to use some pliers and um, use like a rag to put over this. That way I don't I don't mess up the, the the form of this little nipple here. So once you go ahead and unscrew this, you want to just hold on to that little sleeve. And you just keep going and screw it. For like what will seem forever. Until it fully comes out. And you'll slowly hold on to this. Because you will see and make sure you put this the right way you'll notice that the end that goes in does is just a one clean smooth uh, end and the other part has a little groove to hold on to the uh, spring So go ahead and grab the spring and what we're gonna do is pretty much just clean clean this whole part in here there's like some gunk and this was pretty much dry but I ended up having to put a little bit of oil so that I can get the uh, the screw out because it was really really hard so I didn't want to damage it or anything so I put a little bit of that and that lubricant which we're gonna use after we clean it anyway once we clean it we're gonna use the lubricant so that we can get everything back up and and greased up so now just go ahead and clean it and I'm just gonna use some some tissues just to clean some of that uh, gunk and, and grease, whatever type of grease this was, clean it all up, get it clean, and then go ahead and put it back together. All right, so now I went ahead and cleaned the inside, and you'll see a bunch of just um, uh, kind of dirt or stain oil, dried up oil, stains, like stuff like that. So I went ahead and cleaned the inside of this um, valve and you could still see a little bit there on the top and I'll clean that in a bit I uh, went ahead and cleaned this part here and mind you this was really dirty before uh, when I first took it out of the car uh, this was pretty much all black full of just gunk um, I have previously sprayed some carb cleaner to clean it all out uh, the problem with that is that I ended up pretty much drying this whole piece, which is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Um, good thing is that, yes, it's pretty clean. It's all great. Uh, however, um, I didn't realize that I was going to dry it out until I um, started experiencing some problems. 
you know, with the whole idling and all that. So um, I took it upon myself to just go ahead and do it right. So you could go ahead and spray it with that carb cleaner, but keep in mind that that is gonna dry the lubrication that was previously in there. And so um, what you wanna end up doing is once it's all cleaned up, spring cleaned up, this little um, shell, this uh, nipple here, the inside, once it's all cleaned up, we'll go ahead and put it back together. And uh, just to show you guys, this is pretty much how I'm cleaning it. Just grab a tissue and just gently uh, squeeze it in there. Turn it around, try to get some to the bottom, and there you have it. And I just keep turning it, get a get a new little side and do the same thing. Just try to get to the bottom. You know, and you'll figure out what works for you. Maybe a Q-tip or something would probably work better. Now we're going to go ahead and put some lubrication and I'm using this 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil and just a little, a few dots in there, not a lot, just enough to go ahead and lubricate it. Go ahead and put your spring, clean new spring again, and put the sleeve back in there again and put this part back in here again. And this is the part that I was trying to make sure that um, that I didn't lose was a calibration. So once we get that screwed in here. Which will be forever. Here's the part that we want to make sure we try to get back as close as possible to how it was before. Okay. It doesn't look that close on camera, but on my end, it looks pretty close. Um, I don't think it'll look that close to you guys from the angle and stuff, but okay. So now once that's there, we're going to go ahead and put it in the car and uh, see how it runs. Hopefully it runs a lot better and I'll show you guys two simple T25 torque screws to go ahead and remove it. Okay. So this is pretty much what it looks like when it's done and it's about uh, two and a half centimeters from here to the end of the valve. And that should give you a pretty good... Um, pretty good length of what it should be so that the system can go ahead and calibrate itself. I think it's almost like an inch from, from this piece here to, to the end. That should um, get your get the calibration in a pretty good spot. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and put it back and this is what the Dodge Dakota looks like once the uh, um, air, air box or air cover is removed. You'll see your uh, throttle body and your sensor is pretty much going to go back in the exact same way you took it out with the connector facing towards the driver's side. So it just goes in straight like this. Uh, 
There you go. Just like that, once you go ahead and put it on, put on your connector and that should be good. Now, I went ahead and removed my whole throttle body, gave it a good clean, removed the sensors and all that. And, which is the reason why I pretty much had to go back in here again, get that um, AIC fixed. All right, that should go ahead and get your car. And I think this pretty much applies to um, any other vehicles that have the same similar type of uh, AIC valve, the idle, um, the air, idle air control valve. Alright, thanks guys.